Hi Internet, it's Jason here from Godlike Productions once again with the new H9000 algorithm. This time we are going back to the dark side, never really leaving the dark side, but you know. <laughs> so we're doing a non-linear effect again. This time it is a wrap algorithm. This one is going to be available for free to all of the public and it's called the 14 stage wrap if anyone out there is, a, uh, is familiar with Kurzweil synthesizers then in vast which is the variable architecture synth part there is a block called wrap this block functionally does a similar thing where what we're doing is that we ampler we amplify the input signal until it would normally clip and then instead of clipping what we do is we wrap that full stage around from positive full scale down to negative full scale so I've got a few waveforms here to show you and so this is an input waveform so this is, we're just looking at a sine wave here so this is an input waveform and as we bring bring it on input sign, as we start bringing up the wrap amount, which you can see on the um, on the emote there, it's the parameter labeled wrap. You'll see that as we start bringing this up to zero point seven, you can see that as we have clipped it's wrapped around to full scale and again as we go down to negative full scale it wraps back up to full scale you'll see it's a little bit better as we start increasing the amplitude so again we've pushed this now into two decibels so you can see a little bit more of an exaggerated push into the uh, into the opposite full scale and as we push this up you'll start seeing you know, larger and larger amounts of wrapping. Now you can see this one as we've hit uh, eight decibels here. You'll see that we've started, we've wrapped once, gone down, we've gone up, we've wrapped twice. Now this particular version of the plugin allows you to wrap 14 times. After you wrap 14 times, this it won't wrap anymore, and it will actually let you either clip or if you push down the so if we're on the um, if we push down the output gain or we modify the input gain a little bit what will happen is that we will allow we can bring all of these peaks down so instead of pushing up to full scale we can push this to a lower level of full scale and then we can let this um, push through higher I've got some examples of this but let's just run through the rest of these just pictorially before we have a listen to it and you'll we'll just run through them and see what happens as we start in, as we keep increasing this wrap amount so you'll see again the wrap gets bigger we get more wraps so what this does is this imparts a lot more high frequency input now one of the benefits of this algorithm is it is dynamic so because it's dependent on level you can do things such as dynamic distortion now it is quite a harsh distortion but it, it is still can be quite dy it's dynamic in that the harder you push it the more it distorts and as you get up you'll see that you start getting you know higher and higher frequencies when you push this high enough you essentially you're just going to get noise because it's going to wrap really a random amount now you'll see on this one we've hit 30 decibels and you'll see that we've hit the 14 wrap limit and you'll see it started to clip here and this can sound quite nice because it can sound as though you're you saturating so it gets crunchy and then it will saturate into essentially a, a, a sort of square wave and you'll see again you've got these wraps here and then it it clips at the top and bottom 40 decibels even even more so and you're starting to now form essentially into a square wave and we've got a, I've got a few other examples here uh, this is so this is what's happened when I've pulled down the end 
pulled basically pulled down the output and allowed it to wrap 14 times and you'll see that that sign that part of the sine wave that exceeds the the wraps is allowed you know just allowed to form naturally so by adjusting even though there's only two controls on this you can make a lot of different types of wave shapes now this is all just from a sine wave so we've made some very interesting shapes here again this one here is a it's a sine wave where it's clipped it's gone up i think this is the one so you'll see that it starts off nearly a 50 50 square wave so this is actually a um sorry this this is a so this sine wave changes in amplitude so at the start it's got a high amplitude let's see if we can just find the next so you'll see this is the end of it so as the amplitude comes down you'll see these peaks are getting narrower and narrower and then it ramps up to a higher volume and you'll see that these are wider again so this is a part of that dynamic effect that i was talking about uh again is another example of it it gets uh, narrower and narrower and narrower and then as the volume goes up this gets wider so you get quite a big tonal change in these and yeah finally it's just another one where we've taken the output down so it's not clipping now i've provided meters on this so the input the way the way this is kind of supposed to work is you you push your input gain up until this is your inputs sitting around pretty close to full scale and once you hit there as soon as you increase the wrap amount um, it's going basically going to start distorting so it's a good way to basically set a starting point you just adjust your gain until you're pretty close to full scale you'll, you'll hear when it starts distorting as i'll demonstrate in a second and then you start pull, pushing your, your wrap up and this this meter shows the in, basically the wrap so it's the way the algorithm works it gets amplified first or so just to describe how the how i've accomplished this in this algorithm what we do is we take the input level and we i've got a detector in here to detect how loud it should be what i then do is i turn the volume right down <clears throat> um, i duck it by about i think about 50 decibels and then so that gives me lots and lots of headroom and then what I do is I ampli amplify the signal and then every time it exceeds the minus 50 decibel limit, it wraps. And so this is why we are allowed, we left with a lot of headroom and then at the end we add gain back into it um, to bring it back up to around about the level it went in. Um, so yeah, so if you're used to the Kurzweil since this is accomplished in a different way on the H9000 to what it is on the Kurzweil. Uh, so there's a, there's a stage of this for every wrap that we've got. And this, for example, we can't, on the Kurzweil, you can't have those sine waves that exceed the input amount as we've seen, as we can see up in the, in this Ableton window here. We, you can't get this type of effect out of the Kurzweil wrap. All right, so, it's probably enough talking from me. So I'm going to run through some examples here. I'm going to turn off the microphone because I don't get feedback from the speakers. But I'm going to run through. I've got an analog, just a analog setup here with it, with a, um, it's just got a sine wave on it. And this is what I've done. So I'll run through a few of those. And I've got a few different guitar samples just to show how this sounds on guitars, like different types of guitars and some of the, uh, effects now this isn't particularly subtle effect <laughs> so don't don't expect these nice sort of warm drives uh, i've got a little drum kit here that we can hear it on and then i'll come back and i'll have a look at another use for this which is to use a sawtooth wave and you can essentially make hard sync type sounds very very easily all right i'm going to turn off the mic now and i'm going to just run through a few examples so that you can hear what we're doing
Well, so there's just a few you know, different types of application. As you can sort of notice, it's quite a unique type of distortion. What I'm going to do now is go into this analog. I'm going to change this to oscillator 2, which is just a sawtooth wave. And again, have a listen to, as we, as we bring this wrap up, have a listen to how this sawtooth starts making some of those hard sync sounds. So again, we've got almost a dynamic 
hard sink sound generated from a simple sawtooth, a single oscillator, a single sawtooth wave. And you can see how easy we get all those additional overtones in. Often this works best with simple waveforms and things like triangles, sawtooths are going to give you that kind of hard sinky kind of sounds. Anything that has within its waveform the when you drop from positive full scale to negative full scale are probably going to sound nicer to the ears than continuous waveform such as a sine wave where you're going to go from being you know nice and smooth as we are on the input here <laughs> um, you know nice and smooth and then as we start bringing it in we're putting all these discontinuities in it where it jumps so as soon as we got these discontinuities we are going to introduce a lot of the high frequencies and yeah so this Again, I, this will be released in the next day or two. I've just got to finish writing the manual. This is probably got a little bit more of a technical manual in it than some of the previous ones. And for those of you that are subscribing and helping me out over at Buy Me A Coffee, there is going to be a super wrap version of this coming out next week, which allows you to configure the number of stages and it's got um, some more controls on it which yeah gives a much much more versatile uh, wrap effect and so you can control how many times it wraps before it either clips or goes off to make that sine wave and so it's a lot more controllable and yes yeah, it's, it's a little bonus for all of you guys that are helping me out so I'm going to stick a link down in the description of where you can support me on Buy Me A Coffee if you want to get access to all of the content that I've produced so far for subscribers. All of it's there available if you sign up to be a subscriber. If there's only one or two algorithms that you're interested in, then you can of course buy those. But this 14-stage uh, wrap is going to be free for everybody so um, yeah hopefully you guys can find a little bit of use for this uh, something a little bit more creative and out of left field uh, also for all you guys that are programming in vsig i have updated my unofficial vsig guide i've added a few other notes in there i've found a, a way to crash emote <laughs> quite easily with these meters so I've put a little bit of a um, a little bit of a how-to guide to avoid that. So if you're finding that you've got meters on your algorithm and it's crashing emote, there's a few clues in there how to solve that. So again, those are available on my website. Again, I'll post a link to that down below. And yeah, hopefully little bit of inspiration something a little bit different bit of dynamic distortion for you even though it's hard <laughs> uh, I've got quite a long list of ideas that I'm going through to build these algorithms some of them are getting a bit more challenging so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep up an algorithm a week as we go forward but some of the algorithms are a bit nicer I'm going to I'm still working a lot on these sort of dark side algorithms. I like my hard synthesis. I like industrial music. I like destroying audio, which is why a lot of this inspiration comes about. But I also do appreciate a lot of the you know, softer, more reverberant, nice delay sounds, beautiful choruses and phases. So I'm going to work some more of those in in the future as well. So it's not all going to be... Yeah, a bit of the hard bit of hardcore effects. There's also going to be some nice stuff coming through through as well. So if any of my supporters out there, particularly those that have subscribed on Buy Me a Coffee, if there's anything that you'd like to see, drop me a message. I'm up for some challenges. <laughs> well, within reason. We'll see how we go. Uh, I'm still learning VSIG. And I'm going to put up some more VSIG how-to guides in the near future as well. So I'm going to run through, I'm going to finish building the dub delay algorithm and show you how I do that. 
Um, that's one that I have promised for a while and it had slipped my mind. So I'm going to get back onto that and that will be released in probably three or four weeks. It'll probably be the next one that comes out after these series of rap or uh, rap algorithms. Anyway, thank you all for signing in. I hope that you're enjoying the work that I do. Um, if you are, please hit that subscribe button and help us get our numbers up for all the YouTube algorithms it's uh, it's appreciated if you have any suggestions or anything you'd like to see, feel free to drop a comment. I'm usually fairly good at responding quite quickly. All right, thanks all, and I will see you next time, probably next week. See you all. <laughs>